Marriage and Meditation Part 4 When an individual is really ready to enter into marriage, normally we think whenever we attain the physical maturity, there is no set criteria when one wants to get married. And there is no way to test whether the person is ready for it or not. Where do we get the information about it? There are different planes on which an acid test has to take place. When we look into scriptures, they all have narrated the important messages in the form of symbols and stories. But what we do, we hang around these stories and do not understand the important message that is to be, that is there behind it. In Hindu scripture, which is one of the most popular incident, popular scripture known as Ramayana, which has the stories of Hindu God. So when we look into various scriptures, the message, the deepest message, that is the message of truth, cannot be put into words. We have to use symbols, stories, to narrate the deeper aspects. But we remain normally entangled in the stories, and out of that, a form of worship comes into existence known as rituals. These are important messages encompassed into an intricate language. Just as in mathematics we have quadratic equation is the basic equation that means anything that is put into it, it is a format. Quadratic equation is a format which can be used in any of the disciplines. So is Pythagoras theorem. It can be used in any disciplines. So these stories, these symbols are very important to understand the deeper messages because the message has been given by the awakened ones. Just as Holy Bible contains the message from Jesus, Holy Prophet's message is encompassed. What is the level of consciousness of these masters, these sheikhs, these prophets whose message is encompassed in those scriptures? And what is the level of consciousness of us? Can a child understand the theory of relativity? He has to attain a certain level of understanding, intelligence, awareness in the spiritual terms we use the word. Only then we will be able to understand. Otherwise there will be many interpretations and everyone is trying to interpret the things in his own way. It is like the story of six blind men who went to study the concept of an elephant. All of them were blind. They did not have the eyesight. So one of them got hold of the elephant's leg and he said elephant is like a pillar. The next one got hold of his tail and he said elephant is like a rope and so on and so forth. Every single individual depending on the level of in intelligence and thought incumbent at the moment of expression. They try to express, explain what an elephant is. Is elephant a rope or a trunk or the pillar or something else? Elephant is some totality of that. You must have the vision to understand this. One of the important messages is not that it is not in other scriptures. The story goes on like this. Ram and his brothers has just returned from the Guru's, the Master's place after completing their education in the hermitage of the sage. And arrangements are being made for his coronation as a prince. Same time another sage, Vishwamitra, comes to the court. 
he was the one who was trying to harness the energy of the sun he was capable of handling everything on his own but he comes he was performing the yajnas the sacrificial acts so that he can harness the energy for the benefit of humanity but the demons and their force were destroying it and were impediment in their way and it is said when you are in a state of that kind of situation like you are in meditation or anything you should not exhibit anger although they, he was capable of destroying them but it is a totally a different kind of realm normally when we are meditating and children are making noise we get angry at the children and tell them to go away and somewhere and meditate this is absolutely wrong so he comes to the court and asks for the help of Ram, the king to take ram and lakshman along with him to take care of to guard the yajnas those sacrificial acts that he was doing with the presence of ram and lakshman he would be able to perform the act peacefully so this was the way that vishwamitra gauged the viability of ram whether he was capable to enter into married life or not there are three episodes as he was bringing them along with him into the forest into his hermitage there was a demoness called tarka she was the nocturnal demoness and anything which is nocturnal it gains full strength during the night and it is at the advice of the sage the guru he was able to curb this demoness during the twilight hours when she now appears and ram was able to subdue the demoness what does this demoness represents it represents the human desires lust anger when an individual is lonely there are sense perversions he gets into certain acts which are not right it is the outcome of the movement of desires and loneliness then he happens to come in contact with his friends who tell him ways and means how and what to do when these sensual desires arise in individual tarka is symbolic of loneliness so this demoness along with her attendants comes to obstruct the way of ram and the master so these desires must be curbed as soon as they dawn otherwise they gain strength and it will become very hard to defeat them and there were two of his at of her attendants one was the sun desires do not come alone they come with an all their attendants sons and friends so there was another character that means that is marriage one it has two meanings one is death by desire and the other is death of desire you can interpret in two ways when you are continuing to remain engrossed into desires death is bound to happen you are entering into perversities and that destroys your energy and capability to perform to enter into the act properly the other is death of desire when desire begins to surface you have to curb them right away otherwise they gain momentum they increase in their strength and it becomes very difficult to overcome these this is the first obstruction that one has to face along the path the master says that as the night appears these demonic forces gain momentum and it will be very difficult to subdue them so before the night approaches you go in you destroy these this is the very nature that we face when we are alone by ourselves or it is better to use when we are lonely 
desires arising, there is movements in the senses and many kind of desires arise. Then we get the company of the friends who tell you what to do when this something like this happens. And as the night continues, the loneliness continues, we enter into it more and more and it becomes difficult. Later this becomes a habit and then it becomes very difficult to enter into a male-female relation. This is one of the obstructions that creates a problem in the path of meditation. And meditation is the guiding light to enter into any aspect of life, whether it is marriage or relation or anything else. Buddha spoke of five hindrances as obstacles in the path of meditation. These obstruct the spiritual path and thus the freedom of man. Amidst our contemporary life, Buddha challenge us. So in order to overcome these hindrances and thus go beyond, we have to look at these very carefully and closely as well and then fully understand how we get imprisoned by these obstacles. To overcome these, we have to first understand the nature of these obstacles, the sensuous desires. Sensuous desires are the first obstacle in the path. As we continue to operate in the dualistic world of objects and beings, sense organs, the organs of actions and organs of perception, as you are walking through the corridors of a supermarket, the sense of I see something, the desire arises, the other sense organs begin to operate and whole set of new desires are created. Also the constant dwelling creates a drive to gratify the senses. The second obstacle is ill will and negative thinking. So when Vishwamitra the sage carried Ram into the forest to his hermitage he encounters a demoness which symbolizes the sensuous desires and sensuous desires continue to multiply as you are lonely and the night approaches. That is why they are called the nocturnal. They operate their business into the night. During the time of the day you are busy in this work and that work, so the energy remains diverted into other channels. But when you are alone by yourself, or so to say you are lonely, night is approaching, the energy is not moving anywhere, everybody is has fallen into sleep, so the de desires multiply and amplify. The second obstacle that comes with it, that is ill will or negative thinking. This is like the associates of the sensuous desires. And this is followed by anger and hatred. The third obstacle including resentment and vengeful thinking. The fourth obstacle is sloth, indolence or laziness and the state of insanity along with insensibility or dullness of the mind. And the last or the fifth obstacle is doubt. You begin to doubt your own capabilities. All these are encompassed in that story in the form of the nocturnal demon, demoness and her associates in the form of the brother and the son. Now in order to overcome these, what you need tremendous awareness, tremendous understanding of their nature and their side effects. When people go into these kind of acts, the acts begin to intensify, then it becomes very difficult to operate into a marriage relation. Let me explain these one by one. Now the first obstacle, you may wonder how the desire for some, for sense gratification creates an obstacle in a spiritual group. Perhaps this is a practice in Eastern religion, how to detach from sense gratifications or sensuality. Some total of this is known as nafs. 
and Sufis have explained various stages of nafs. In order to have a clear understanding of this obstacle, let me explain it from an unexpected angle. When we associate spiritual growth and development with high goals and rare states and also consider identity with sense gratifications as low and inappropriate for spiritual development, the first obstacle arises. We consider these as wrong. The moment you consider anything wrong, it hangs around your consciousness. Many times young people have narrated to me of these habits that they are developing when they are lonely in the night. They ask me if I will not name any but it encompasses all that we engage into. The very thought that has been given to them it is wrong. And when something is wrong, for instance smoking, drinking, this and that is wrong. The moment you start with negative thinking, it becomes very difficult to overcome these. So I told them that you want to go. The question was asked, is it right for a spiritual person to enter into these kind of sensuous desires and acts? I said, there is nothing wrong in it. There is nothing undivine or divine into it. It is your interpretation. It was a shocking to the person. I said, yes, you want to enter into that, you can go ahead. But you have entered into it in a most loving way. First of all, take a bath, change your clothes, light an incense, keep a very mild night light in the room. Now you put on your TV screen or the laptop screen or whatever is the method. Now you enter into it knowingly, consciously and lovingly that you are entering into this act. The moment awareness comes into it, all these sensuous desires begin to disappear. The very act that Ram himself is capable of overcoming that because he is a man of meditation, man of awareness, but along with him is a master who is an enlightened being. Enlightened being guides him that this is the nature of these sensuous desires. Now, before their strength increases and multiplies manifold, you destroy these. But what is the way of destroying it? Entering into it meditatively, lovingly, what is these desires? Absence of light. Anger is absence of light. Hatred is absence of light. So what you have to do? They do not have their own presence. It's just absence of something. You bring the light into it. The moment you bring the light, the mood, the awareness, the awakening into it, it begins to disperse. And what he does? He said, to shoot an arrow. In the beginning, Ram was playing. He, he shoots an arrow. The demoness responds. She shoots an arrow. Ram responds to it. And it is a game going on. He said, don't play and waste your energy in playing these useless games. As the night approaches, her strength will multiply. And then it will be difficult to subdue these. Shot this arrow this arrow of awareness and destroy. In order to have a clear understanding of this obstacle, which is very important, when we associate spiritual growth and development with high goals and rare states and also consider identity with sense gratification as low and inappropriate for spiritual development, the first obstacle arises. We have been told that these things are wrong. Something is wrong, something is higher. Something is low, something, the other thing is higher. There is something good and something bad. There is nothing like good and bad, low and higher. You have a wall in front of you. Tell me which is lower and which is higher. Lower is the beginning of the higher and higher is the culmination of the lower. 
If the lower is not allowed to continue, the higher will not come into existence. So both are part of one synergistic harmony, the low and high, good and bad, right and wrong, left and right. So you have to understand this and then and only then you can discard it. For your sake, for convenience sake, if the wall is standing in front of you and you have to hang a picture, you will hang a picture at a point, at a place where it can be visible to the others. So you choose an altitude which is visible to the naked eye. But there is nothing like high and low. The upper part of the wall or the lower part of the wall. The foundation is the lower. And without the foundation of the lower, the higher cannot come into existence. Without that, if the wall, the foundation is not allowed to continue, the wall would have not been there. And without the wall, there can be no roof and nothing, no structure can come into existence. So everything is very important. Thus, the first obstacle comes because of this thinking. This brings conflict between our natural tendencies and spiritual development. These are the natural tendencies. Every child enters into these kind of acts, but he hides and does these. And then it happens, it continues, even when we are not allowed to live our childhood properly. Then even when we are old, we continue to remain a child. This is important and this creates perversions. When the conflict arises due to desire, we get attached to the senses. This is the negative attachment to senses. This creates bondage as we are tied to the dualistic world of senses. Buddha cautioned his monks against such sensual distractions. He explained the nat nature of sensuality so that the monks could keep full attention on the practice and devotion to holy life. This was to create single-mindedness. But when followed blindly, it becomes an obstruction. It was taken literally by the monks who considered sex and sensuality as inherent evil. The problem got further complicated because of the obsessive thought pattern that only focus on sensual objects and their rejections. And thus the mental clarity was lost. This is symbolic in that incident. When you are lonely, a sensuous desire is coming into you. You have friends and associates now. The internet and the information technology is one of the greatest friends for the people who engage into sensuous desires and use these facilities for wrong reasons. We talk of sensuality. We refer to five organs of perception and five organs of actions. First, an information comes to you. A desire arises in your bodily realm. Then through the organs of action you enter into to fulfill that desire. Together with the mind, these constitute the sense organs. When our perception from the outer world comes through the organs of perception, that is eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin as form, sound, smell, taste, and touch, stimuli, it gets mixed up with ego and existing impressions in the mind. And then through the organs of reaction, the impressions are expressed in the outer world of objects and beings. As a speech through the vocal cord, leg movement through legs, hand movement through hands, reproduction through the genital and excretion through anus. Every moment we meet different patterns of these stimuli and thus we continue to gather new impressions in our subjective layer of the mind. These become obstacles, rather a passing phenomenon. So when we sit in meditation, we are asked not to close our attention to such functioning. With full attention, we need to be open to 
each one of these impressions. Thus we can work through the obstacles by putting them in their world rather than leaving them as hidden menace. It would be easier to retire into the forest or into the cave than you see nothing but birds, animals and nature. It is difficult to live in the world but it is exciting and you can learn a lot. However, this is a personal choice. It puts us into an awkward situation to deny the very senses that we rely on to experience life. When you accept these and their functioning and effects, you gain insights. We can use senses to deepen our perception of ourselves and others as well as we grow in watchfulness and wisdom. If you understand your own emotions, you can understand the emotion of others. When a particular word is spoken, what kind of effect it will have at the emotional level of others. There are three words. One is IQ, intelligence quotient, a measure, a number to handle the difficult situations when these arise in our lives. And normally the IQ remains between 85 to 115. As the things continued, in 1905, Daniel Goldman, he studied and he said there is another aspect of this growth that is known as emotional development. And if you are able to understand your own emotions and sense functionings, you can understand that of others. Then the world came into existence, emotional quotient. And it was then understood that these are the two and incomplete. Unless there is a, another quotient that is known as a spiritual quotient. A spiritual quotient is a combination of intelligent quotient and emotional quotient. When these two balance one another, you understand your own emotionality and you understand that of others as well. A different kind of maturity comes into you that is the measure of a spiritual quotient. So this is the way that with full attention and you are open to each one of these impressions, thus you can work through the obstacles by putting ourselves into their world rather than leaving them as hidden minis. It would be easier to retire into the solitary realm, into the forest, but that is not going to help you much more. Unless you experience something yourself, you will not be able to explain that to others. It happened with Indian mystic, the eternal sage Shankar. He was unmarried, a monk. When he entered into a debate with a married person, he defeated him. And when he defeated, his wife came into, he said, wife is the half of the man. They are part of one harmony. Unless you defeat me in argument, my husband is not defeated. And she asked him one question. Shankar was a monk. She asked him about the marriage experience. Shankar could not answer, so he asked the leave of absence to go and study that and come back to him. So if you are not have not gone through into any, any of these states, it becomes difficult for you to understand the problems when the seeker mentioned to you. Thus you have to accept the challenge of the sense desires and transform the obstacles into a tool. We have to learn to enjoy our various faculties and not be a victim of this. This is why in the meditation that Buddha gave, known as Vipassana, V means, Pashana means to look at, to look at it again with a different vision. And other breath-oriented techniques 
we clearly observe how these sensual desires arise and how much these control our consciousness. Thus all attachment begins to loosen their grip and you attain freedom. This is the way to transform your problems into effective tools. This is better than suppression. Suppression creates a negative effect. When something is not dealt with, it will definitely carry explosive energies within you. We see this in people who have been politically oppressed or sexually oppressed. Exploding into violence and aggressions, this way it leads to the solution of any feeling at its core. This is a natural process of clearing rather than any plan of evil. Tantra emphasizes whether you suppress or express. In both cases there has to be an awareness. If you are express if you are expressing it without awareness, it will not help you to attain to freedom. If you are suppressing it without awareness, then again it will lead you to many states of perversion. Now the third obstacle which is sloth or indolence or laziness or inactivity with partial insensibility or dullness of the mind. This is familiar to all of us. There is a direct relation between physical sleep and fatigue. Whenever you are tired, physical sleep recuperates this. However, there is no connection between physical sleep and mental lethargy or dullness. Physical sleep cannot relieve the fetters of the mental sleepiness. How does this arise? Whenever you encounter a difficult situation and avoid the total experience, then you enter into drowsiness and mental inactivity. This weakens the mind and also makes it sluggish for meditation or deeper aspects. This also brings a dreamy state, dull and heavy awareness, and also a meandering mind. When you focus on this dullness with an extended attention, more energy is generated. This burns away the dullness and more energy is generated if you can look at the entire process deeply and penetrate the existing dullness. Not only that, the obstacles are also removed, but there is no excuse to stop the process. This does not matter if dullness leaves completely or unfolds more resistance. Constant effort is always needed. Never allow any slackness or discouragement in efforts because this brings further slothfulness. We cannot rest on such achievements. It is only through perseverance and patience that we can progress. When we are fully open and aware of the energy, you will experience strength and clarity. When there is full attention, there comes a vibrating energy at every center of awareness. This unifies the field of consciousness, then nothing matters. Although we continue to experience all sense functions, the body adjusts to the natural posture for its well-being and you are free of any agitation and restlessness. Peace descends then. This happens without any intention or willful effort, through loving attention and ease. Thus you are free of dullness. Worry and anxiety is the fourth obstacle. This arises out of deep unhappiness within the mind. This is expressed as turmoil, frustration, paranoia in the psychic world. Restlessness comes in. We get easily distracted and then lose diversion. We wander aimlessly between the objects and beings. When you are so dominated, it appears as if dust is being scattered by the mind. 
This results in the loss of concentration and focus. The mind begins to wander. Such a state remains. We need to wait and see how long this storm may last. In this process ego suffers. But you stay with awareness. Urge to work and change things will arise. Such is the subtle form of this obstacle that continues to manifest restless action out of despair. You go on watching until the storm naturally subsides. This will bring new energy. When you struggle against the natural process, there will be loss of energy. So when the sensuous desires arise, when anger arises, watch it. Also there will be new wave of restless and anxiety. As we struggle against this natural process, there will be loss of energy. In such a situation, non-action is the best approach as this will not keep the flame of the scattered energy alive. Non-action is most powerful approach in this case. Meditation will bring calmness through awareness. However, this does not deny or try to alter the situation. And the last obstacle is doubt. Doubt relates to worry, restlessness, mental laziness and dullness. This arises due to blocks in the heart energy. Indecisiveness is the characteristic of doubt. Then we cannot decide whether or not there is such a thing as enlightenment. We are also doubtful of our capabilities for this. We are tied in uncertainty. Insecurity comes in and we find we are unable to continue to work we had started. At the same time, we are driven towards certain goals and we are eager to proceed. So we cannot leave the situation as it is and thus proceed. There is conflict. Though the flow of energy to the heart center is blocked, doubt arises. We cannot let it go and at the same time cannot stay with it. What is to be done in this situation? As is the case with other obstacles, any action will only complicate the situation. Stay quiet, watch the space within and attend to noises of doubt and uncertainty, the inner dialogue. In that situation, weighing everything to arrive at the conclusion is no more effective. Because this arises out of confusion instead of stillness, any effort to work it out will only increase doubt. In this situation, watch the doubting gain with interest and detachment until true feeling begins to come in. With this comes a certain clarity which will guide further actions. It may be a precise moment, but the impulse that arises with such alertness will certainly bring authenticity in action and a surety in the move. But this cannot continue and then doubt will arise again. So instead of struggling against this, surrender to the reality of the change and thus benefit from the clarity of the vision. When doubt disappears like an illusion. Never take such obstacles as an excuse to cease from war or avoid practice. However, these can become objects of our awareness as these manifests as these manifest challenges to our practice and objects to further strengthen our focus. These can help in bringing about wisdom and rediscover our capabilities and the strength within. Therefore, we must work creatively with them. Accept these Accept their companionship without any self-blame, otherwise you will experience further loss of energy and positive energy, positive attitude 
to help us along the path. Remember all that arises must pass away. Like the wind and the rain storm, as the final outcome, we develop an understanding of a thing as it is. Things continue to arise as this is the nature of reality. Whenever we find ourselves amidst a particular situation, we tend to apply our understanding as a basis to obtain a helpful relation with it. Then we dwell in a realm of freedom. Also, we let the things be without any conflict. Thus, we accept whatever arises or happens, and we trust our attitudes, and we trust our attitude of awareness. Thus, wisdom arises and flows through whatever our particular reality may be. With this comes a tremendous understanding within us. This is the first aspect. That is the sensuous desires and how to overcome these with awareness. This is the first symbol in that story how to subdue the demoness. This is an important aspect. You remember we are living in an age of information. In the wake, in the forest of information, knowledge is lost, and in the affluence, in the Abundance of knowledge, wisdom is lost. We have to regain our wisdom, the capability to understand deeper aspects of our life as it arises on a day-to-day -day basis. 